Hi everyone, it's Rendon with TJ Free, and in this video, I'm gonna do a follow-up to the office build that I did a couple of, several months ago. I was stacking these ICF blocks, so these foam blocks, and um, the studio is basically finished, but the workspace is not quite done yet. So I'm gonna come upstairs, I'll give you a quick peek at the studio, and I have a lot of video footage that I'm just gonna do some, uh, show you, you know, we'll hop over to the video footage and show you kind of the build process. And then I'm gonna do a follow-up video and we'll do a full tour of this workspace and talk about all the different um, areas that we have for creating um, all kinds of video content and tutorials for you here at TJ Free. Um, so I'm not gonna dive into to the, the whole tour right now. What I wanna do is just hop over to this screencast here um, on Shotcut and we'll talk about the, uh, the process of building this. And then in the next video, when this is all done in a couple, maybe a couple weeks, uh, we'll do a full tour of the whole space. Let's hop over to it. Here's a look at the top-down view of the footprint of the shop when I had first just started trenching around. So I trenched this with a Mini X and then ended up having to pull some out further. It's called a frost-protected shallow foundation. Uh, and the way it works, there's the styrofoam is everywhere. Anywhere there's concrete, the styrofoam is protecting the concrete. It makes it so that the footings don't have to go down below the frost line. Here in Idaho, usually you have to have your footings extend lower than where the ground will freeze. Otherwise, it'll, it can crack and damage your foundation. But with this method, uh, it just the styrofoam protects the whole foundation so you don't have to go nearly as deep. You see the, the footings are only about 12 inches deeper than the slab. And this is just regular styrofoam. Um, we had a manufacturer uh, here locally make it for us and cut it to our specifications. And if we needed to, we could rip some down quickly on the table saw um, on site. You'll see my friend here, Josh Ruby. Uh, he's actually helped me a lot. He's an engineer and he, this is his system that he's used, uh, that he designed and has, he's used several times. And so I was glad to have him helping me with the ICF process and as well as the foundation um, design and preparation. We put down this plastic, so this is like a vapor barrier. And on top of the plastic, we put rebar to you know, reinforce the concrete and strengthen it. And then we use this remesh uh, in the middle, here's the uh, water pipe for the in-floor heat, and this is just zip tied to the remesh. So the remesh gives support to the concrete floor, keeps it from cracking, uh, and then also the uh, heated water pipe. This is just PEX piping that's special for uh, heated floors. Uh, this is going to we're going to run hot water through it to heat the building. This is the laser level. So to make sure we're keeping everything level, we use this while we're preparing the site and then also pouring the concrete. It's very important to get everything level. Um, I've done some concrete work before, mostly like sidewalks and steps, never a, a foundation. And so I had a, a crew come help with the uh, some of the site work and also the pouring and the, uh, the flat work for this foundation. And I'm really glad I did because I'm sure I would have messed it up. If you haven't done concrete before, I definitely wouldn't recommend trying to do your own concrete because you just got to have a lot of hands and you've got to really work it quickly because it dries quick and it can turn into a mess really fast. But this worked out well. This crew really knew what they were doing and uh, and Josh was on site and I was on site too to make sure everything went smoothly and they did a really, really good job. Uh, the floor turned out really good. The slab and the foundation. Um, this is almost a year later uh, recording this video now and we haven't had any issues. So before the concrete fully cured, we measured out and put in this rebar. So we put this kind of into the footing uh, and that way this is where our walls are going to attach. And so, since the walls are also going to be full of concrete, they attach to these metal bars, this rebar, and then that way uh, we have a nice place for the walls to attach. This is the method that the walls attach in. So a couple days later, the concrete is cured. Now we bring in the styrofoam blocks. We measure out and we chalk a line exactly where the walls need to go. This is important because I already have my trusses, so this wall line needs to be exact so that the trusses will sit correctly on top of the walls. So we chalk the line exactly, and then we set the styrofoam ICF blocks right up against that chalk line so that we know that it's yeah where it should be. And we can we will be moving it around. You know, the wind blows these before the concrete gets in them. So right before we pour the concrete, we do a final, um, we make sure the wall is plumb. We make sure it's right on the line. You know, we don't have to worry about that too much right now. We just get it right on the line. We stack them together just like Legos. You can see here, it's important to get the 
like our water pipe, we had to measure exactly for the for the utilities to make sure that it was going to be not inside the wall because you can't really change that after the fact. We put rebar in the ICF blocks, so both vertical and horizontally. It's like every 42 inches, I think. I forget exactly, but basically it's a giant rebar grid um, around every opening and every 42 inches. So once we had the very first uh, course done, the blocks are 16 inches tall. Then we just moved on to the second course of another 16 inches. We just stacked the blocks up. There's two types of blocks. There's these corner blocks, and then there's a straight block. The straight blocks are 48 inches. The corner blocks are like a, a 32 and a 24 or something like that. But uh, yeah, it makes it real easy because you just stack whatever block. You just stack, if you're doing a straight block, you stack straight. Uh, and we we sized the building so that we wouldn't have to um, cut any, uh, very, very few blocks had to get, be cut. So this is after one day, we got about eight feet tall uh, after the first day of stacking. Here's a video of just cutting the block. We just cut it with a, a knife and stack it. So it's very easy, you know, just hand tools, you can do this. And then for the windows, we actually use like a, you could use the, the hand saw, we use a reciprocating saw. So we cut out the windows and doors to be the size that we need. This is also very important, as you can imagine, since it's going to be concrete, um, you want to make sure you get it right. This is just, we filled in the garage door with this metal cap, uh, and then we built uh, like a two by six bracing in between. So that way, when the concrete gets poured in, it's not going to flow out these sides. We did a similar thing with the doors and the windows, just using this six inch uh, styrofoam, and we just wedged it right in to keep concrete from pouring in the windows. This is a rim board that uh, the second floor is going to be on. So the office is up on the second story, like upstairs in this shop. And so this rim board goes over here and these J bolts, uh, they get pushed in. And then when the concrete gets poured in, it just hardens around these J bolts. So we have a nice wood surface to uh, nail to. So we put this bracing up. You can see these braces to keep the, the wall from moving when the concrete gets poured in. It's, you have to have these. So this is the bracing, and this is the, the morning of the pour. So we poured um, everything in one day. I think the walls are, are they 13 or 14 feet tall. We had to have a, a pump truck come. So we had two people up on the wall, um, and then sometimes we'd have a third person down, like kind of pounding on the wall to make sure all the concrete was falling down. Uh, the concrete truck actually pours the concrete into the pump truck, and then the pump truck pumps with this giant boom arm and so it can move around, and that's the method that we use to get uh, to get the concrete up and into the walls. And these pump trucks are pretty expensive. I think we paid seven or eight hundred dollars for the day. It's actually really not that bad, but they can cost a lot if you have to have them come out, you know, multiple times. We poured everything in one day, and I was really happy about that. So we have this like uh, giant, like vibrating stinger that we push down in here. And that helps like agitate the concrete so that it will fall down and slide in between the rebar because you really don't want to have any pockets. Um, and it's possible that you have like an air pocket or a pocket of kind of loose where there's no concrete and that's going to create a weak point in your wall. So we agitated it to make sure that everything fell down and we had a nice solid wall. We also used the extra concrete to pour a sidewalk and sort of a concrete entrance for the garage door. And we had, I mean, we used all the concrete we had. <laughs> so the next thing to do, once the concrete wall is set, we use my friend's boom truck or lift truck, like a crane, to uh, set the trusses. And I also got to use my, like, man lift truck to, you know, set a couple trusses as well. Um, so it started really looking like a, a shed at this point, like a, like a shop. Uh, once we got these uh, roof trusses on, but then winter hit and it kind of slowed us down. So I really had to try to get this roof on quickly. So I actually hired some guys to put this the this four by eight sheeting on the roof, um, and also to build the second story. So we put this uh, these this floor across. We put a, a steel I beam down the center, and then half the shop has this second story, which is which becomes the the actual video studio. And I put some nice windows uh, along the back of it just so I can have a good view out the back. We get some nice natural sunlight coming in the windows. Uh, and then we also have a good view out the back so we can see um, what's going on in the backyard. 
Once the roof was done, uh, I ran the electrical. So to do this, I just sort of routed out and put in the wires right inside the foam. So it's a little bit different than like traditional building. Uh, and I used this uh, angle grinder and I would just put it right up against the foam and just cut in. And that's where I would put a chase for a wire and I could do plumbing this way. And so all the boxes and all the wire are recessed into the styrofoam and then it can be covered. Uh, this is the kind of how the upstairs was coming together uh, before sheetrock. And then we put in this spray in foam. So this is like that expanding foam. It seals off any air gaps since most of the building is very energy efficient with these uh, uh, foam blocks. This spray in foam helps to keep everything um, really insulated just on these top triangle parts that, that it wouldn't make sense to do the foam blocks for. Uh, and then we also sprayed in the ceiling. So we sheetrocked the whole ceiling and then sprayed the top side uh, with foam so that everything is completely sealed and fairly airtight. And then we put in just batting insulation just on the office part uh, to keep it kind of insulated. Here it is with drywall on. And here it is with carpet. Then we moved in furniture and that's basically where we're at today. It's been a lot of fun building this shop and it came together more or less um, the way that I was hoping it would. Uh, it's by far the biggest thing I've ever built. You know, I'm a maker, I'm a builder, and so this falls right in line with, um, you know, things that I like to build, but it's by far the biggest thing I've built uh, so far in my life. Um, I want to give a shout out to Shotcut 2. I'm editing this video in Shotcut, and it's like 40 gig. It has a lot of drone footage and a lot of like really high, like large file sizes. And this, I mean, it is a nice computer that we built here on the channel a while back. I think I have like 32 gig of RAM. But this is just a huge, massive project, and, it, and Shotcut has handled it flawlessly. I'm not uh, using proxy clips either. It's just doing a great, great job. So kind of a testament to some of that free software. I'm running Linux Mint on this, and you know I've talked about all the different um, software I use on this system. But if you have any questions or comments about the build process, about anything in this video, um, please leave your questions in the comments below. Um, and keep an eye out for a future video. I don't know when I'll get to it um, or when this all, will all be finished, but when it is, I'll do a, a more in-depth tour and uh, it should be a lot of fun. So thanks guys, catch you in the next video.